Hi, I'm Cayman Reynolds, and in this video series, we're going to see if algae is a good supplement for pollen. Now, there's nothing better than diverse, healthy pollens come in for your bees. We all know that. But what about when your fall flow is non-existent because you had two or three months of hardly any rain at all? What about if you have a late swarm? What if you have some late splits or you had a super seizure at a wrong time? The colony just wasn't strong enough to sock away a lot of bee bread. Supplements can really help you in situations like that. But most of them out there are based off of soy and other ingredients that probably aren't the world's best for bees. Well, spirulina, which is an algae, is a product that I eat occasionally in green drinks and can be very helpful for the bees. I'm leaving a article below, a research paper actually, on spirulina and you can see just some of the positive impacts that it can have on the honeybee. But there's still more questions than there are answers and ultimately you can have all the scientific data in the world but how does it translate into the colonies themselves? We have about two months of dearth coming up and even longer if we don't get summer rains where we don't have hardly any pollens and little to no nectar at all for our bees. For the big colonies, this isn't a problem. They have plenty of bee bread, they have plenty of honey, they'll be able to do just fine. But little colonies like this that are six or seven frames, they could really benefit from the protein and the fats that patties like this can provide. One of the other big things that we're going to be testing is can this help deter small hive beetles? One of the other problems with your generic patties is that small hive beetles absolutely love to lay their offspring in them and shortly after you have small hive beetle larvae all running through your patty or slithering or sliding, Ugh, nasty stuff. These are rumored to be very good at deterring small hive beetles from laying their eggs in them. So I figured the best test that we could do is take four colonies that are healthy but still undersized and feed them a little bit more patty than probably what we should be giving them. I feed a lot of pollen patties, mostly ultra bee, and the bees eat them pretty readily. But small hive beetles are something we have to account for. So we're going to be taking these two colonies here. This one's a 2019 queen from a very strong colony we made a split off of. A brand new queen who's probably about two or three weeks old. All of these are our own queens and our own splits. Another 19 queen from a honey production colony we pulled a five frame nuke off of. And this colony right here, which is a queen that hasn't even had her own brood come out yet. These colony sizes are ranging from five to seven frames in strength, maybe eight at the most. But all the queens are laying good. We decided to put apivar strips in all of these colonies to ensure that the mites were not an issue. Bees that are having problems with mites or viruses or any other type of issue do not eat pollen patties of no matter how good they are and won't take sugar syrup down well also. This is one thing professional beekeepers look for when they're going through their bee yard is are the colonies consuming things like they, they're supposed to. So let's get into a couple of these colonies and see but again our main test is just to see how well the bees will build off of these patties because I want to see these colonies growing. We're going to be running several videos in this series uh, series all the way into late August when the hopefully the fall pollens really start to come in and just as or more importantly see if the small hive beetles will really go after them. If we don't see any small hive beetle problems with one pound patties for a five to seven frame strong colony we might go ahead and bump it up to a pound and a half and just go a little overboard and see what can we get away with here. Um, before you ask in the comments below um, I'm going to leave a, not only a link for the research on spirulina algae patties, but also where I got these from. And I'd like to say thanks to Healthy Bees for donating the 40 pound box so we could find out for ourselves that this is an option that might be better for our bees, much healthier, and uh, also deter those small hive beetles. So I'm, I'm really anxious to see if there's something that might be able to help us out down the road. Always looking for better ways to take care of our bees. Let's get in one of these colonies. So over here, I've already placed a one pound patty in, in this colony and those two colonies over there. Now I'm going to place one in this 2019 queen. And we're also going to check it just a little bit. This is the strongest one of the four. And this one is the weakest one of the four. Now 
Now it has quite a bit of bee coverage, which is very important. You can see the ape of our strips in there, our frame feeder. I have a couple foundations over here. This is, and they're starting to mess around with it a little bit. There's a little bit getting drawn on, this one's pretty well drawn. And we're going to dive down and just kind of see what they look like. Now, just because she's a last year's queen doesn't really mean that she's that old. She's probably actually just hit her first birthday. So you can see where there are bees emerging out of the cell. There's one right there. A lot of fuzzy bees up in here as well. A lot of emerging bees. This is really good. Young bees, once they get to the feeding larvae age, are going to be the ones going towards the patty, consuming it, putting it into their fat body organ, and then feeding it as worker jelly. You can see there's some bee bread in there, which is really good. But that's fixing to go away. And this county does not have four, five, you know, three solid frames of bee bread all together. They, they don't. They're, I split them off of a four deep colony that was wanting to swarm. And I found the queen and I just decided, you know what, it's late in the season. We're just going to go ahead and split her for this test. Let's just check another frame or so and see what's going on. You know, but the queen, she'll lay a lot, but if there's not enough fats and proteins, they'll cannibalize her eggs and larvae. Now you can see that there's sugar syrup down in the cells here. That's why some were missed. We've been feeding them a little bit harder to encourage uh, found drawing of the foundation. There's a decent bit of bee bread over here, and I'm sure that's where it came from the original colony. That's good. That's not enough to last all the way through our dearth, though and the colony to keep growing. I'd really like to see these colonies start a second deep box. Now, I'm not saying they're gonna draw all that foundation out. Um, I might not even put foundation. I might just put a box of deep combs on these colonies once they've filled their boxes out and see how much they'll build into there. It'd be cool if we could build them up enough where we could split them in late summer. That would be nice. And let's just go over one more. Okay. There's a lot of syrup over here. A lot of syrup. You know, there's a decent bit of brood, but we're not going to be feeding this one for a little bit. We'll let them grow a little bit. There's a There's definitely a need for more brood in this colony. They're doing pretty good. Want to see more though. Let's check over here on one of these newly drawn combs and see what's going on. The bees are a little bit ill this morning. It's, it's the, the flow's ending, and I always notice that right at the end of the honey flow and the pollen flow, the, there's just so many forager bees that have nothing better to do than to look the, at the beekeeper and go, you know what, he's smiling too much. Wait, wait, let's take him down a notch. All right. It's a good thing, thing bees can't think like that or us beekeepers would probably be in trouble. Well, here's one of the new drawn combs and it looks really good. There's, there's larvae and eggs down in there. So they are doing some drawing. Keep in mind though, when I pulled this, I, I didn't get a whole lot of forager bees and it's your older bees that do the wax drawing. Not the oldest of the oldest bees, but you know, it's not the nurse bees either. So it takes a little while for those bees, um, those nurse bees to graduate old enough to start really producing good wax. I think we're just starting to see that now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put this back down in there. We can look over at this colony and see how they're eating on their patty real quick and then we'll let you go. But we're uh, definitely going to be keeping you all up to date on these patties. I'm interested to see if they can help our young colonies out, especially when, in regards to the small hive beetle. Got to put these back in. Yeah, I'll just stick that over here. Now, before we put this patty on, we got to do a couple things. First of all, we can smoke the bees down, but 
look at all these bees on the lid right here. We don't want to crush any of those, we can help it. Shake those off. Smoke them down. Just try to get them out of the way so we can get this patty down here without hurting anybody. And then go to munching. While these bees are going down, let's pop this colony. Oh, I forgot we already put the patty on this one. I knew that, but I forgot. Well, I ran some of the bees off the patty. But you can definitely see where they're going at it and eating it. I went ahead and split that one in half just to see what the consumption rate difference is. Now, this colony is definitely smaller than this one over here as far as population, but it has a lot of good-looking brood. And with just a, a couple more weeks, it's definitely going to take the next step into filling out that box. All right, come on out of the way, girls. All right, now we are going to just place that right there. And then our lids have this nice half inch rim on them and that gives the bees more access to the patty and also enables them to be able to defend the patty better. Bees are actually pretty good at defending their territory from small hive beetles if given the chance. Another thing I want to add is that this has been a poor year for small hive beetle. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I think down the road, if we don't see a whole lot of small hive beetle signs, we are going to put on maybe a pound and a half, maybe even two pounds if they grow you know, a pretty good um, bit. And, and that way we'll be able to really see just having that excess in there sitting there for a long time over a week period if the small hive beetles will go after it over time. But, um, I'm really interested to see. It's one of the things that we've got to do with in beekeeping is keep pushing. Things always need to be going forward nutritionally, understanding about the bees, uh, genetics, all of those different things. So I'm pretty excited about this test. Hopefully we'll find out that spirulina is a wonderful thing for bees and also helps prevent those pesky small hive beetles. This is Cayman Reynolds and thanks for watching our videos.